Can you hear me loud and clear, Judge? I've got you. All right, we're going to do a run up. We got the Continental Titan and checking each ignition. Those clear and free. And perhaps we'll go about half. Today I'm here with old John Humber. He's uh, getting ready to, or he's actually been building the 750 Super Duty, and uh, him and I have never been up to the Super Duty together, so I'm just going to take him up and show him around a little bit. And we're going to explain. He's going to explain why he's uh, wanting to build a Super Duty, or is building the Super Duty versus his 700 he wants to fly. <coughs> and we got the center stick. You got an option for dual sticks. Probably like you, I like the center stick. I love the center stick. No, I, I had thought about doing this with a dual stick, a conversion on mine. Right. Yeah, I, I like the center stick. It just uh, feels much more natural. It becomes an armrest for me on the cross-country stuff. It's The thing will fly by itself pretty well, so I just, I mean, it's a literal armrest. Right. All right, so I'm going to show you a short takeoff. Got a little bit of wind, not right down the runway, which, you know, we like to right down the runway. And it's kind of like your 701, you got the stick back, add power, add brakes, nose comes off pretty quick. Immediately, right. Um, I don't know, you, do you use flaps on takeoff? Uh, sometimes, well, it depends on the situation. Usually I'll pull them right as I'm going right. to the parking right. ground, uh, just quickly, and then, of right. course, mine are manual. Right. These are electric, electric right, right there, yeah, so I, yeah. Yeah, I can't. Be nice to have a switch up here. Right. I like the flaps on takeoff, not to take off shorter, but it adds a little stability. And when you're just right off the ground and just trying to hang on, I think that's where it helps. So we had brakes, power, stick back. Those comes up instantly. The right rudder, as you know. I don't take off extreme like you, but you take off about the same. Yours just looks good. I love it. I love it. I'm smiling every time I take off in this. Oh, yeah. It's just so much fun. And I go ahead and bring the flaps up. Yeah, you can climb out really nice, and I mean, it's just. Nice flying airplane. Performance-wise, it's it's really impressive what the Super Duty can do. It just compared to what I know with the 701, it's it's impressive. Right, and you know you can carry that much extra weight too. Right. And it's got so much more room. Yeah, I love the visibility. That's one of the things that really kind of draws me to the the Super Duty. I, as I've been to your homecomings and stuff, I look in here and I just, it's all open and it just feels feels so much more roomy. Right. So if you built the 701, you've been flying it for the last, what, about three years? Yeah, about three years. I finished finished it in 18, so toward the end of 18. Okay. And uh, you've been doing a lot of a lot of competition in the 701. Uh, so what drew you to the Super Duty? You know, what I tell customers, uh, if you've been flying and building the 701, it's kind of ch hard to change. So it's, uh, it's tough to go away from the 701. Of course, the 701 I built with the intention of I, I never thought about do, using it for stole competitions. That was never in my plans when right. I built the 701. Um, my original plan for it was just to be able to fly around the farm and maybe take one person with me and just the local fun. Not right. really even cross country, maybe once every, you know, been a long while or whatever. And then it just it evolved. The, the stole competitions happen in the cross country. And, you know, I've got hundreds of hours now going cross country to events, back and forth and that kind of stuff. Um, it's really kind of opened my eyes to the capabilities that these airplanes can open certain opportunities for places you can go and things you can do across the country. And of course, now I have a, a, I have a daughter in the picture, so it's, we're a family of three. Um, that, that along with our group of soul bandits, I fly a group of about a dozen others. Right. The local stuff, we can go see local waterfalls and all kinds of stuff, and it would be really nice to be able to have my wife and daughter both in the plane for you know, local stuff. Or right. We even pack it down and, and go to a little more long distance cross country right. stuff. I, I just right. thought the capability would be a little better for our small family. Well, you didn't want to lose that short takeoff and land and the same uh, maneuverability as a 701, but you wanted more either payload or an extra seat. So right. it sounds right. like that's the reason you went with the Super Duty. Yeah, a little more capability and, and just exactly what you said with the runway. I'm still, my, my plan is to still use the Super Duty off my small farm strip. And, you know, looking at the specs and seeing what the Super Duty is capable of, it's, it's going to fly in and out. Up just fine with no problems. Right. 
I've, I've taken my 701 out of, of that 300. Well, it's, it's probably getting closer to 350 feet now, but right. we've taken it out full gross, actually over gross because... Yeah, look at this. See, we're down in low 40s right now, and I'm actually still climbing a little bit. Yeah, that's incredible. See, right. very stable. Yeah, the not, has a little more wing area. It's the, the right. wider wingspan. And right. I think that really, that, that makes it an incredibly capable right. plane. Uh, you, you went up in uh, Randy Shannon's airplane, 750 Super Duty, and it has the dual stick. And uh, go ahead and just feel it with this. You'll find that it flies very similar to the 701. A little heavier, but it uh, feels better than the dual stick I like. Yeah, I, I love this one. Because you got there. direct linkage. You don't have, you know, and don't have anything in your way. Nothing extra there. No, yeah, <laughs> yep. And, uh... You're building it from the, you know, our standard kit, and so you're finding that the 750 Super Duty is quite a bit more advanced than the 701 kit, right? It's incredible. I, you know, I noticed that when, just when I built the first, we did the virtual uh, rudder work up when I built oh, the Oh, okay, that's right. Me and, yeah. me and a buddy there in my shop did it, and it, it immediately, I mean, you, the final size, the way stuff matches up, you just put Clicos in it, deburr, and then you're ready to, to line stuff up and go. It's, it's incredible what the company's done with these final size right. crazy kits. Right. Well, it, it makes it a lot easier for builders, and uh, you know now we're getting all types, types. Excuse me, all types of builders. You know, for the first-time builders to you know the, the the very skilled builders, and they all enjoy the CNC stuff. I mean, if you're trying to make a modifications or something, there may be something that, that's not exactly. But I right. I told multiple people when you're building these things. They work just so well with the factory specs. There's really no need to modify stuff. Exactly. Just build it and fly it. Yeah. And uh, with your Super Duty, have you thought about the engine options? I, I know you're pretty pretty good on the UL power, so... I do, I do love know. my UL. It, and it's been incredible in the 701. Uh, the UL power makes the turbo 520. Okay. It's yeah. a fairly new engine, but it, it is turbo 220 horsepower. Uh, that's that's probably number one on my my pick list. I haven't committed to anything yet, but that's one that I'm really really kind of focusing my, my goal towards. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know there are a lot of there are a lot of options out there, and I, that's another big benefit with the Zenith and the capabilities of catering to whatever the user wants to to go with. Right. Right. I think the Super Duty is going to work well with anything up, you know, 180 horse on up. You know, I've got the, I've got tons of time at the 801, which is our four-seat airplane that we used to sell, and uh, you know, we had 180 in there, and it, it performed just as good as this. And the four-seat is just the design is, is so well done with you know 180 horse and 200 horse. And this is the, this is 205, right? 205. This is yeah. a really nice smooth running engine too. Yeah. This is a good setup. Yeah, this is actually the Aerosport 205, which is basically a Continental Titan. That they, I think Aerosport in Canada, they, they take the Continental Titan, they build it up, and then they add some, you know, to get more horsepower out of it. But I don't think you need 205. Uh, you know, 180 to 190 is probably ideal. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. It's a, it's just an incredibly capable plane. Um, with this whole process of the 701 and seeing it, I mean, I'm just I enjoy these stall competitions. It's fun to go and play and right. be with the, you know some of the big names out there. This reason the whole bunch that are some of the big names. Here's yeah, a big name well, right here. I appreciate <laughs> it. You know, I tell people I'm I, I'm pretty humble. I'm just a country boy that built a plane and I'm having fun. Right. That, right. To me, that's what it's all about. Yeah. The capabilities of the plane. Uh, it's, it's proven itself that it's capable even in a very stock form. You don't have to do all the heavy modifications to make it be enjoyable and go to these competitions and, and right. be respectable with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but that being said, the Super Duty, I, I'm, I am kind of looking at the 220 horsepower. My, my bucket list is to be able to fly out west to maybe do some of this full drag and some of the higher altitude stuff. Um, I want it to be capable on a competition level as well as just uh, around the farm. Right. what I'm used to too. Right, exactly. But again, there's there, it gives you limitless options. You, you can build it, kind of cater to whatever mission you want. Right, and exactly, and kind of what you said just a second ago that, uh, you know, if you want to fly out west and fly up in the, in the Rockies or in the Canada, North, you know, or Alaska, you know, Super Duty is going to fit that fit that niche a little bit better than a smaller two-seat airplane. Because right. you can handle more stuff, haul more stuff. Uh, you know, I've had the 801, uh, never had the Super Duty up out west yet, but I've had the 801 out there, and it performs so well. 
no issue on whatever weight you put in it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, if you throw it in and it'll pretty well handle it. Right. Um, and, and just looking, I mean, I'm looking around here at the, the space in the back. It's, the capability, now you know, I have no complaints with the 701. It, oh, you know, no. You throw two people and try to get all your camping stuff in the 701, you're kind of pushing the limit of okay. capable of. Where this one, I could see where you could easily have two people in this one and really just pack it. Yeah. A week's worth of camping stuff, no problem. Well, the way I have uh, the CG set up on this 750 Super Duty, at the front of the envelope is the empty wing CG when it's empty. So I'm starting at the very front, which is nice. So actually, if I were to do a store with takeoff and landing, I like to put about 60 to 70 pounds. Just you know, to get that. Just to get that. So that's memory. great if you're going out you know, on a camping trip, because now you start at the very front, and you're working instead of starting halfway in the CG and working right. your way back. Yeah, we did it. We did a great job on the, the weight and balance on the, for the Continental engine. Yeah, it obviously worked really well. Yeah. Yeah, I, could, I mean, I could tell just from the takeoff you did there. That's it's, the tail. The tail just goes down instantly. It and does. The Super Duty does it just as quick as mine does. Yeah, it's really impressive. And Jan showed us uh, a little bit of good performance. That sounded fun with the competition of the Super Duty. Yeah, it was very respectable. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's go back and we'll do a landing. And I had to get to fly with you. I've, I've kind of carried it around. Um, Roger's flown with me one time before, and this is the first time I've flown with Roger, so I may be one of the few that can say I've taken Roger for a flight before he took me for one. That's right. And Mexico, that experimental 750 is on the left downwind for one eight Mexico. This is our 36, 36 Mexico. I don't know if I've landed on 3-6 all winter. It seems like it's uh, we've had a lot of wind from the, the south. Always the other and, direction. Uh, <laughs> generally, you got a lot of wind from the north in the winter. All right, so your technique is a little bit different than mine on landing. I'll just kind of talk you through so everybody can, you know. What I like to do is beam the numbers. I'll bring back power, get in the white arc, put it down a little bit of flaps, start my descent, and maintain a little higher approach and control my descent with power. Yep. Everybody's got to find their dips, whatever their technique is. And they do. There are a lot of different ways in there. Oh, yeah. There's not necessarily a wrong way to do it as long as you can make it right. a, a consistent. Exactly. You guys have, I mean, I have the Super 701 the channel. A lot of you guys have seen me going in and out of my strip. I, just the way mine's set up and yep. the way I do it, I'm, I'm more prone to dragging it around and dragging it in so that's kind of hit a I guess a mindset for me is that I, most of my approaches I really do drag it yep. and that's a little bit against the normal really especially if you look you know training and that kind of stuff but the way my approaches are a little different <laughs> that's great I love watching you do it I said I like watching you come in on your strip. About uh, two and a half miles to the south, maneuvering to the left 45 entry on runway 27, Greenfield. Hey, Mexico traffic, spirit most turning final for 36 Mexico. And we all, I mean, even me watching the videos, we all enjoy Roger's approaches <laughs> and watching his videos, too. Roger makes it look so easy. No. Well, I, I try because I've got a lot of, you know, first-time builders and flyers, and I want them to feel like, hey, yeah. anybody can fly this. It's that, you know, it doesn't have to be anybody high-performance time to do it. That's for sure. These are very forgiving aircraft. Yep. They, they, I mean, you know, I've, I've told a lot of people, it's definitely a benefit to get some transition training. Oh, but yeah. If you get just a little bit and get a feel for it, it works. Even if it's one or two landings, watching somebody do it, just sitting yeah, over there. Exactly. Yeah. So what I like to do is keep a little power in, bring the nose up, add a little power, and start working my way down. Guys, if you're new or watching this, guy here is a master. Oh, that was incredibly <laughs> no. smooth. I mean, you just, yeah. you just can't grasp how smooth that was until you Let's go. You want to go around again? Well, yeah, let's go. So stick back, power. Right up. That's amazing. It does. Now, I can't do any more because I got the stick back. I'm just waiting for it to take off. Right. Now, you know, probably I could take off shorter. 
if I kept the nose down, built up a little speed, then pulled it. Yeah, because I got that all that frontal area. But are you talking? You're talking feet. You're gonna say, you know, you're, you're talking. Yeah, it's just not getting in and out of the uh, back country. It's there. Exactly. It's, just, uh, it's the competition. The feet. Right. Yeah. Right. Getting that nose out of the dirt. That's what you want to do. Yeah, that's very true. For these these places, we will land maybe rocky or sandy or whatever soft ground. That, that's one of the main things you want to do is get that nose up and away from it. Correct. And these do it almost instantly. It's really impressive. That's why you don't need it as a tail dragger. Yeah, you, that's true. You put the, these are that's tail dragger mode. You know, a lot of people. Right, one of my favorite things to do is I, I call it wheelbarrowing, but keeping it on the back tires and keeping the nose up. <laughs> I like that. I mean, you you can yeah. you can even make the turns with it, which I'm comfortable with it. So it's impressive what it can do there in that tail dragger mode. See, I'm used to having all this runway and concrete. I don't have to go in between trees. And <laughs> well, as you know, I need a lot of room, so that's why, you know. <laughs> oh, you, we'll have to get you to swing by the house sometime. We'll, you'll put this right in there, Roger. And, you know, it's, it's like your strip. You know, the first time you go in there, you're going to be shaking and nervous. But once you do one landing, you're going to build from that just like this. You know, every airport you go into, until you've done that first landing, it's going to feel a little odd. Right, right. That is for sure. I, you know, a lot of people, at this point, a lot of my friends and stuff have landed in my trip. And there have been some very expensive, or very um, experienced pilots that have flown over it and said, nope, I'm not doing that. And that's so, good. Better yeah, to be that's, honest. That's, 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 that's for sure. Exactly. For sure. <laughs> you don't want to hurt your pride. You don't want an exp expensive airplane. and No need to bend stuff over exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, but it is just what you around. said. Once you do it, once you do it there one time, it really, it's really not that bad, my strip. Yeah. Especially with the type of airplanes that we're right. Most aircraft, if you was coming in right now, you would be extremely high. Yeah, you would be way high right here. And this is, just take your time, relax, pull back power, bring the nose up, start developing a little high sink rate. Hey, Mexico, traffic thermal sympathy, super duty is final 3-6, Mexico. And we're indicating 50, 49, 48. Got a little sink there, add a little power. 43, 42. Very, very similar to what I do with 1101. Is that right? Speed ranges are, are, are pretty close. Of course, this final, you're coming a little steeper, but the, the short final for mine might be a little slower, but it's because right. it's because I'm dragging a higher right. angle of attack. Again, guys, watch Roger here. I mean, I could be drinking a cup of tea and not even <laughs> spill a drop. This is so impressive. You can just walk it like John was talking about. Yep, just keep the nose up, keep that yep. off all the way. But I want to go with it, really. Yep. Oh, well, it was fun. Maybe tomorrow we can go up to the 701. Oh, I would yeah. love it. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Well, John's got to get back and start building that Super Duty. And uh, we have been, it has been an incredibly couple of busy months on the farm, but I'm hoping to really tackle that hard here in the next month or so and see if we can make some progress and get that to where you guys can see it at a homecoming here. Oh, Maybe yeah. not this year, but next year for sure. Exactly. All right, guys, see you all later. Thank you, Roger. Yep, you're welcome. Enjoyed flying with you, John.